Hi everyone, I'm back with a new video and today it's going to be a little bit different. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Malin and today I'm going to show you some behind the scenes footage from our home studio and tell you a little bit about how we make our videos. This video is made in partnership with Blackmagic Design. With that said, all information and opinions in this video are based on our own personal experience and preferences. We often get questions from you lovely people about how we film our videos and what kind of equipment we use and uh, how I think about styling and I'm going to let you in on all of that today. But first I want to talk to you a little bit about the intention that we have for this channel. And our primary goal is really to show the beauty in vegan and plant-based food and show that it can be easy, it can be delicious, it can be versatile and that it is all these things and let you in to our home and show you our way of cooking and eating and on top of this we like creating a nice flow with the imagery we have and think about mindful sequencing to reflect a sort of calm and cozy homely um, atmosphere to reflect the way we like to cook and we also like to try to balance sort of visually appealing material with information so that we can combine our aesthetic preferences with the ethics we try to communicate on this channel channel and the bottom line is really that we want you to be able to enjoy the visuals of the videos while them being helpful to you in some way also. There are obviously a lot of things coming together to do all of this and that's what we're going to delve into a little bit more now. Firstly, of course, we need tools to create videos. And basically, we have two setups that we use for different occasions, and they include two different cameras. And we have one kit that's sort of for more controlled environments, like when we film our recipes or our talking heads, which is what we're doing right now, where I'm talking to the camera. And then we use a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K. And we've been using this camera now for the past six months or so, and we're really enjoying enjoying the beautiful and organic footage that comes out of it and I think even you guys have noticed an improvement in our recipe videos in this period of time. And what's so great about the camera is that it's dedicated for filmmaking and it shoots raw footage which means that you have a lot of flexibility in the editing and it works really well with the editing software we've been using for probably a year or two years now called DaVinci Resolve because it comes from the same company. So they, they, yeah, they work very well together. It also has a lot of professional features which help all the way through the production. For example, it has really good audio connections and it also has really great tools for getting the exposure right. And in general, it just feels like all the tools that come with this camera are really well thought out. But then on the other hand, when we're on the go and we're filming more outside or maybe when we're making sort of travel videos, when we're filming in cafes or restaurants, we use a Sony a7 III. And why we use this camera for those kinds of environments is because it's smaller, it is not as conspicuous and doesn't make people look at you as much or question what you're doing. And it also has built-in stabilization, it has autofocus and you can take photos with it. So it's very good for this kind of on-the-go, more agile approach that you need when you're uh, vlogging. With the cameras, we obviously also use lenses, and we have a few favorites. So with the Blackmagic, we use lenses from Sigma and from their art line, and we often use the 18 to 35 millimeter or the 50 millimeter. So this is for filming food and interviews, and why we like these lenses for this is because they give a really good quality image at a good price, they're well made, and they start at a low aperture, which gives you the option to shoot shallow images if that's what you like and for our Sony we like to use a Tamron 28 to 75 millimeter which gives you a good range for on the go it means you can zoom in and out the way you like and we like this lens basically for the same reasons that we like the other lenses but this lens is also lighter which is again very good for on the go it means you don't have a bulky kit when you're running around the town. 
Now that we've talked a lot about the technical side and the tools that we use for filming, I want to talk more about the creative side, which is of course comes from the concepts for your videos, but also lies in the styling. And uh, styling is basically creating visual interest in the image to sort of convey an emotion or idea or to reflect your intention. And when I think about styling, I think about creating depth in the image. And to do this, I think about foreground, middle and background elements. And I often place, you know, the main attraction or activity in the middle and then place items in the foreground and in the background to create that depth. And uh, it also helps to frame what's going on nicely. When you place items in the styling of the scene, you also have to think about where the light is coming from. So you don't put tall and big things close to the light source because that will cast long shadows. But of course you can if that's what you want. But often I like the light to flow in nicely towards the center. So I like to put the bigger things on the other side away from the light and the smaller, lower things closer to the light. I also like to think about contrasting elements in the styling. So this can be colors that contrast each other, or it can be light and dark areas, just to create some sort of drama in the image. So you'll often see this light and dark or different contrasting colors happening throughout the scene. You might also want to think of color in terms of evoking a certain emotion or to go with a certain season. And uh, this is all about playing around and and finding what you like. You can also go very minimalist with your styling or very not minimalist, very maximalist or somewhere in between. I think I'm somewhere in between but I do like this sort of cozy, homely look so you often see me playing around with my ingredients in the shot and framing everything with a lot of props. And when it comes to props, we don't have uh, an abundance, but we do have some that I've collected over the years. And you often ask me about this and quite a few I've made myself. And uh, otherwise, some of my favorites come from a, an English maker called Non Living. I can link them in the description box. And when it comes to props and ceramics, it's quite good to think about choosing non-shiny things because that can give reflections into the lens, which don't look that nice. So think about buying matte uh, glazes on ceramics or bowls and uh, buying some vintage cutlery can also be a good idea because you can often find cutlery there that have a matte finish. Another thing I like like to play around with in the styling is fabrics so you can use uh, obviously tablecloths and little uh, cloth napkins tea towels and this creates a lot of visual interest I maybe do this more in my photos and in my videos but you can totally use them for both Another thing that maybe I change more often when I take photos is the background or the work surface. And uh, here you have a lot of options for what you use. You can of course use a table or a kitchen island or uh, I have some ceramic tiles that I use a lot. In my videos you often see me cooking on a ceramic tile that I put on my kitchen island. And I also have some backgrounds that I've made myself from plywood, some uh, plaster, and some paint so there's lots of different things you can do I like them all and uh, yeah they all give obviously a different look a main consideration for us here is to either choose a lighter background or a darker background and then go from there so that way you're already thinking about this sort of contrast and creating interest in the image and all of these principles of creating depth and working with contrast and colors go for talking heads as well, like you have me here. And um, I have no foreground elements today, but you see I have a lot of background elements and I have a cupboard on this side that fr frames me from this side and some items on the counter as well. And I have my <laughs> extractor fan on this side and some items over there as well, which sort of gives a nice framing to me in the middle. So there's lots to think about, but there's also lots to play around with and yeah this is the most fun part for me. And this brings us into how we actually film our videos. And here there are many aspects to think about, but I want to talk first about location and where we choose to film. So we don't have a studio, we film all our videos in our home. And 
and we film all our food videos here in our kitchen and we like to set our table up by a window so we usually do it right there and we do this because we like to use natural light when we film food and by placing the table there by the window we get a nice side light onto the scene or the table where we have all our items and doing all the actions and for food it's really nice to have side light or a little bit like side backlight it gives nice shadows and uh, yeah it's a, a common way of lighting food and when we film our interviews we basically use different spots around our house and then we often use artificial lighting to light my face like right now I have a soft box here which lights me and uh, gives a nice shape to my face with lights and shadow or darker areas and it separates me a little bit from the background and uh, sometimes we also use more lights depending on where in the house we are like right now this window here is giving me a little bit of an edge light or a backlight uh, to frame me from that side but lighting is a whole other uh, conversation I think but um, otherwise when we film our food or even right now we also like to think about blocking light that uh, is uh, sort of fighting with the other light and we can also block areas where light is bouncing so, so then we use a big black reflector um, to place in front of a window for example or in front of a wall like for example here in the kitchen we have a white wall here that bounces light which gives a lot of light around the image and we often place that black um, canvas over that to stop that from happening so when it comes to light it's adding light and taking away light that we play around with and when it comes to the actual filming we have some tools beyond the camera and the lens that I already shared with you about and uh, for filming food we often use the camera handheld or we use a monopod to give it more stability but uh, holding it handheld gives a lot of flexibility to move around and I think you've seen from our videos that this is something we really like to do and uh, this helps us create that flow that I was talking about before but also adds a lot of visual interest when we move around the scene. But for interviews or talking heads like we're doing right now, then we keep our camera on a tripod to keep it steady and still so you don't have to look at me while Rob's shaking over there for a really long time holding a, a heavy camera. And another thing we like to use as a tool to help us is uh, external monitors, which means that we can see the image that we are filming um, in a bigger format. And it also gives me the opportunity to see what's going on from Rob's end so that I can style the shot uh, sort of dynamically as we are filming, you know, many, many shots. We also use monitors for um, top-down setups so that we can see it closer to us and bigger sort of what's going on above. And another good thing with external monitors is that you can apply a LUT and basically that means that you can see a more finished look straight away because otherwise the um, footage can look quite washed out in camera but in the monitor you can basically uh, apply <laughs> It's not a filter, but I guess a filter so that you can uh, see what it can look like when you've edited it. When it comes to the images we create when we film food, we have a few sort of favorite angles and ways of playing around with the camera to create sort of dynamic uh, shifts between the shots and to again create that flow that I was talking about. And uh, we like a sort of low straight on shot uh, a lot of the time and we also like a top down shot a lot of the time and then we also like to do a sort of pan from the side which we often do from sort of behind a herb or behind some other foreground element to give a sort of sense of a reveal and uh, another thing we like to think about is playing around with proximity to the action or item that we're filming so we might uh, sort of go further back or come in closer to again have that dynamic range 
Then when it comes to sound, which is of course also an important part of making videos, we use some different mics for different occasions. And when we um, film food videos or recipes and we're recording that natural sound of the action, we use an on-camera setup. But when we film a setup like right now where I'm talking over here and you're over there, then we're using an external mic that's sort of over here with me. And uh, when we're filming outside and out and about, we like to use a lav which you wear so that it's really close to your mouth and you don't get a lot of sort of sounds uh, from what's happening around you. It's more just the sounds that are coming from you. So they're really, it's really useful to think about what mic you use for what environment. And then there's of course the sounds that we add to the footage, which is music or sound effects, which brings us into talking a bit more about editing. And like I said earlier, we're using a software called DaVinci Resolve to edit our videos. And we've been using it for a while now. We really like it. It's a really well-rounded program where you can really do all aspects of video editing within that one program. And it really excels in color grading as well so to create the look and feel that you want and even the free version of this program gives you lots and lots of tools it's equally well-rounded so we started off with the free version and really enjoyed it for a long time and have recently upgraded to the the paid program and now we enjoy it even more and then when it comes to who does what in the editing process, then I do a lot of the cutting. So to create the sequences that you see in the finished videos, I do that. And I also add text layers and I choose music and sort of edit the video to the music. And then Rob comes in and he does the color grading, which he really loves and he's become so good at. And he also checks the audio levels and makes sure that everything's balanced, which I'm not that good at. When it comes to the music that we use in our videos, we use some um, sound from the free YouTube library. And actually when we began our YouTube journey, we used all our music from that uh, service because of course it's free and that's great when you're starting out. And now we've um, invested in Epidemic Sound, which is another service with a, with a really big library of music um, music and sound effects that you pay a monthly fee to be able to have access to that library and it's yeah I really enjoy using it it has so much to choose from and uh, yeah I often choose jazz music I I don't quite know why it just happened that I I was going through these libraries and that's what really stuck with me and I felt that it had a good synergy with the material and the video footage that we were creating and it also helps to create that sort of calm cool cozy feeling that I want to portray to you and that's really all I have to share with you today about how we make our videos and we weren't quite sure how much in depth we should go in this video so please let us know in the comments if there's any aspect of what we've been talking about today that you would like to learn more about or if there's something you feel that we missed out on please let us know and we'll try to make more videos where we sort of share with you our process and maybe even can help some of you who want to film or start your own channel but yeah yeah, thank you very much for watching we really hope you enjoyed it and we look forward to seeing you again next week with sort of more of our regular schedule and yeah take care thanks for watching bye